I'm also a philosopher. I like to think about stuff. I don't like to just talk about technology. Life happens to you and around you while you're looking at your phone. And while I stand up here, it's interesting that how many eyeballs I can see versus how many lit up foreheads with everyone looking and tweeting, Facebooking. But nothing screams disruption and innovation like PowerPoint. <laughs> the future is not what it used to be. As James said, we're living in a very disruptive time. Digital disruption is all around us. It is happening to us, and it is also happening because of us. So my message today is really about a choice. You have a choice as to what role you want to play in the future of the digital economy. Do you want to shape it, or do you want to be affected by it? There are some people in this room, there are some people who are watching the stream, who already sound like their parents and their grandparents. Oh, in my day, we didn't have all of these iPhones and iPads. We had, to, we had to talk to people in real world. We could make eye contact. Yeah, 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 you already sound old. Because it doesn't matter how old you are. It doesn't matter how you used to do things. All that matters now is how you're going to do things in the future. And this is what's so magical about right now. This is why I'm inspired right now, is that it doesn't have to be the way it always has been. The routines that we know, the policies that we follow, the rules that we live by can all be broken. And that's your job. This is your moment. This is your time. See, we're the last generation to remember what the Kodak moment meant and how special it was and how when you took a picture, you shared it and it was your memories and it evoked nostalgia. And now you have an Instagram moment and now you have a Snapchat moment, except that's gone. So now the future of the Kodak moment is something that we're gonna learn in business school as that moment when you completely fuck something up. That moment when you don't realize that your market is being disrupted, or that moment that you don't seize to change your future. We all have the power to define what that future is. We have the power to define who gets disrupted, how we disrupt, but we have to think differently than we do today. We have to appreciate that while we have ideas, Maybe those ideas aren't good enough. Maybe we need to think bigger, think more innovative. Creative destruction is an old economic principle. It's basically what we're all talking about, digital disruption, disruption in general. Every now and then, something comes along and upsets the market to create something new. The thing about Kodak is that they were sitting on some of the world's greatest patents for digital imaging. But the executives at the time felt that if they pursued digital, that it would cannibalize their film business. And they were right, it would. <laughs> because at some point we were just gonna stop using film anyway. So they made a decision to not compete for the future. And creative destruction is about competing for the future, not competing just for the moment. We're really good at competing for the moment. But what we don't talk enough about is digital Darwinism. It's this idea that technology is going to evolve. Yes, so is society. Who saw the, the selfie movement coming 10 years ago? Nobody. But we're just progressing. So it's as much about technology as it is about society, sociology, anthropology, psychology, ethnography. And so the more that we can study how society is being affected or how it wants to be shaped or affected, we can actually think about how digital plays a role in evolution. Because you either evolve or you don't. You either adapt or you die. So as much as I want to talk about technology, it's hard. It's too fast. There's always something new. 
I call this the wheel of disruption. And at the center of this wheel of disruption right now is real time, mobile, social, all surrounded by this cloud. And then around that you have the app economy, big data, second screen, geolocation, messaging, ephemeral, gamification. And then around that you have the maker economy, the sharing economy, beacons, robotics. Oh, I see some people taking pictures, so I'll go back just for you. <laughs> so just looking at this is already too big to keep talking about technology. <coughs> the next 10 years are critical. How we live life, how people get elected to politics, how people run businesses, how people start businesses, it's all changing right now. So we have to play a part in this. Does it happen to us or does it happen because of us? And I think that everybody is at this conference today because we all believe in ourselves that we will shape the future. But don't do it just because of technology. Because technology has a really nasty way of making things look very old once the new thing is out. You have to think about how you're going to change society, how you're going to improve society, how you're going to make things easier for me as a professional, as a human being, how you're going to make things easier for the people sitting next to you, in front of you, and behind you, how you're going to change the rules, because that's what this is about. Because I don't care how innovative your technology is, I don't care how cool it is, I don't care how much funding you've gotten. Because if we put that into the same old system, into the same old process, into the same old way that we've always done things, we're actually not doing anything new. We're not moving in a new direction. And that's our time to define. All of these principles, all of these ideas about disruption are things that go back to times when pictures were taken in black and white. We didn't even have color yet. And yet disruption is something new? No, it is not. What is new is your courage and your ability to stand up to what exists today and break it. And break it proudly. And recreate it in a way that is better for society today. Because we all talk about change. Everybody gets excited about innovation. But no one wants to start with change within. Nobody wants to change themselves, because change is for the other person. If you're not disrupting your life, your own life, it is going to be disrupted for you. If you're not disrupting your own business model every year, it is going to be disrupted for you. So be the disruption. We all talk about the future. We all write and read about the future. I work with a lot of companies, I work with a lot of entrepreneurs, I work with a lot of investors, and everybody wants to know what the other person's doing. They want the best practices, they want the top 10 ways to disrupt technology. They want animated GIFs that show them what to do next. The future is unwritten. None of this is defined. It's yours to define, it's yours to write. This, for anyone who recognizes it, for the geeks in the room, is the console from the Back to the Future DeLorean. And if you look at the top line, it is the future, 2015. Folks, that is next year. And this is what the future was supposed to look like. I don't see anybody dressed like that. So, yeah, we don't know what the future looks like. That's why it's your job to define. And I actually believe that the future has to do with what you feel, what inspires you, what moves you, what upsets you, what angers you. It's that emotion, it's that passion that allows you to define the future. But you have to question everything. Nothing can be good enough. 
more black and white pictures for you. This is Henry Ford, and this is a quote that I hear all the time. Well, don't look at your customers, don't look at society. Steve Jobs never did that. Henry Ford never did that. This is a quote that is thrown in my face all the time. If I asked customers what they wanted, they would have told me they want a faster horse. Well, guess what happens when you question everything? Henry Ford, there's no evidence that he actually said that, yet we throw it around like it's common knowledge. What he did say, and this is a book from Dale Carnegie's How to Win Friends and Influence People, is if there's one secret to success, it's that you have to get the other person's point of view, their perspective, other than your own, and let it touch you, let it inspire you to do something about it. Because we all have to look at cats at some point today. Society is changing. This is how we're gonna start reading the news. With pictures and crazy headlines that fill your Facebook news feed. What happens next will blow your mind. We have a choice in how we look at this and we can say ha, 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 that's the problem with all of this stuff but to them it is the best party ever they're probably telling each other right now this is the best party yes I know this is so great but they're in the moment and what's on that screen is the most important thing to them and so to become part of them we have to think like them. What does it take to get on the screen? We all read reports that call this the second screen. But I believe it's actually the first screen. It's the screen you always have with you. How do you connect with somebody through that screen? This is a real product. That's an iPad holder. It's getting younger and younger. In fact, for those parents in the room who are gonna put their kids through toilet training, they make one of those too. Because why should we have to talk to anybody? You could have an iPad. So we hear that necessity is the mother of invention. So then that means there has to be a father of something. And I think that that is vision. What you see that no one else sees is how the future will be defined. What you do that others won't do is how innovation in the future will be defined. But as absurd as all of these pictures are, it is our reality. And something tells me that this time, all of this technology, all of the phones that are in our face, we're actually becoming more human in the process. As James just told you, it's not so much about the technology, it's about the connection you can make with people. All of this data that we have is teaching you more about people. And that's what this is about. Human beings. What moves you? What makes you share something? What makes you connect with someone? What makes you buy something from someone? And it's because you can make an emotional connection, a human connection, in real time, at any time. But there are other factors that are happening too that we have to think about in terms of innovation. Uber, Airbnb, they're not just incredible platforms or ecosystems, they're representatives of the fact that sharing and trust and transparency are now an important fabric of our society. That means that buying isn't just the only option anymore. Sharing is part of it. I grew up following things a certain way. You go to college, you get a good job, you get married, you buy a house, you start a family, you plan for retirement. This is no, this is no longer how life is going to go. It's choice. People don't want to go to college because they want to start a company. People don't want to go to university because it's too expensive and they don't want to carry the debt with them for the rest of their lives. 
People don't want to buy a house because it's too expensive, they'd rather rent a house. People are waiting longer to start a family because they're too busy doing life. And this is okay. This is a fantastic quote from Rachel Botsman from her book, What's Mine is Yours. We get caught up in life, advertising, buying, stuff that you don't even need. So these changes to our economic knowledge, how we walk through life is changing and it affects how we innovate. It affects how technology impacts society. People are saying goodbye to their phone lines. We'll probably be the last generation that has a phone number. We'll probably all have individual IP addresses. We'll be part of the internet of things. It'll be like the matrix. People aren't watching TV the way they used to. If you ask kids, they'll say, yes, my TV is right here. The sharing economy, the collaborative economy, the maker economy, all of these things are rising for a reason. It affects everything. So what's being disrupted is not just technology, it's not just society, it's also behavior. That's why this is about human beings. Why are they sharing more than they used to? Well, it's not just because Uber is a great app or that Airbnb is a great ecosystem for renting places. It's because there's a lot of things. We're tired of greed. We're tired of politics. We're tired of economics that go up and down. We're tired of debt. We're tired of over-consuming stuff. Those have incredible reverberations in the market. It means you downsize. You shed a lot of the things that you own. You rent more. You're thinking about getting a 3D printer so that you can create. You work differently. Maybe you don't even want to go into an office. You don't buy, you share. You trust more. You live a more transparent <laughs> life. You don't even realize how you're slowly starting to change. And that is true disruption. Not just innovation but changing how someone goes through life. And that's the power that you all have. There's an old saying, if it isn't broke, don't fix it. But that's exactly wrong. You're supposed to break things. That's the core of economic destruction or creative destruction. Innovation begins with an idea how to improve something that isn't broken or how to do something differently, all driven by a higher purpose. I'm sure you all know Tony Shea of Zappos. In a conversation we had a few years back, he said, I've studied all of the companies to seek inspiration, to see what they do differently. And there's this pattern. Companies that strive for a higher purpose always outperform companies that focus on money, shareholder value, stakeholder value. So again, the next 10 years will happen to us or because of us. And if you know Clay Christensen and the innovator's dilemma in his great book about how to stay innovative, what if you flipped the title and you became the dilemma's innovator? There are no shortage of problems around us that need to be solved. We just don't deal with it because it's okay or that we accept it. But we don't have to accept it anymore. We don't have to do things just because that's the way everybody does things. We have to lose our fear of trying something new. We have to lose our comfort of being in the same place every day. We have to embrace fear to try something new. I'm not just talking about creativity. Everybody in this room is creative in their own way. Creativity or striving just for creativity creates a commodity of ideas. Innovation is something that is truly original or new and it breaks into a market or a society. But to be disrupted, or to, be, to cause disruption, you introduce a new direction. 
you change behavior. That's what made this man so amazing. He wasn't just a great leader, he was probably one of the best UX designers in the world. But he crossed technology with liberal arts. You could also say he crossed technology with social science. And that's when technology becomes the most powerful because you change behavior. And when you change behavior, you shape and shift societies in a different way. Because creativity doesn't always equal innovation. Your ideas aren't always innovative. I ask you to solve problems. I ask you to create opportunities. And you know when you're doing a good job because markets and demand will appear out of nowhere. And that's what this is about. In the last few minutes that I have with you, I want to share this. This is a quote by Maya Angelou. I've learned that people will forget what you said. People will forget what you did. But people will never forget how you made them feel. Disruption is about an experience. And an experience that's so amazing that you don't even realize it. Technology is at its best when it is invisible, when you don't have to think about it. That's when you make someone feel. And when you make someone feel, you change behavior. You will never see Apple talking about its processors or its speed. You will just see experiences. And you will hear stories about those experiences. And you will hear that what makes them different than everybody else is that they're not innovators, they're experienced architects. That makes you feel something. Question everything. This is a quote that's often shared by Gandhi, be the change you wish to see in this world. Except he didn't say that either. Question everything and you find the truth or you create the truth. What he did say is we not need wait to see what others do. We don't need to wait for someone else. This is your time to define the future. This is your time to create opportunities, to solve problems. All you have to do is fill in the blank. What is it that you're going to do differently tomorrow? I believe that this is our time. Everything that we know today, everything that we take for granted today can be broken and rebuilt. It's just what you want to do with it and how you're going to disrupt markets, how you're going to change behavior. No one's going to remember your failures. All you have to do is try. Digital Darwinism favors those who at least try. No one's going to hold you accountable all your life for your failures. But people will remember your success. Try. Keep trying. And succeed. Because that's what this is about. This is your time. Thank you very much, everybody.